okay so i have finally decided to do it now if you don't know this is a follow-up video to the tutorial i did yesterday so here's the video and if you want to check out the original tutorial the link is in the description so feel free to check it out and let's get started hey what's up guys Drewel here and as you can see this will be the final output and the original picture is this and i will also be using this iphone photo if you want to use any of these, the download links are in description. Okay, so let's start the effect and first thing I would like to do is go to file, go to place and where is it? Uh, place this image that you downloaded and now I'm gonna make it bigger. So make it big enough so you can see it properly. Uh, I think that's big enough. Then go and confirm it. Now we have to cut her out from the background and for that I'm gonna go and select where is it? The magnetic lasso tool and quickly make a selection. Now one important thing, when you are doing selection, don't try to select this hair here, just simply go and select the back because I tried removing them in refine mask and they don't look that good. So just simply get rid of them. So it's done and if I zoom in, as you can see, uh, I only removed this portion of hair and I kept all of this. So when you do selection, keep that in mind and now let's go and apply a layer mask so the cutout is looking pretty okay so first thing i would like to do is right click on my layer mask and where is it uh, select refine mask and then i'm gonna zoom in and i'm gonna paint on this hair a little bit here so we have this really nice uh, cutout yep looks pretty good let's go and do it here as well and on this hair Let's look at the after before, so original and refine mask. See, it looks much better. Hit OK. Now I'm gonna zoom out uh, and as you can see, it looks like she is falling. So I'm gonna rotate her a little bit. So activate your image layer. It's important, okay? Activate image layer, press Ctrl T and then rotate. Uh, so it looks like she is exactly standing here. Let's go and make it a little bit bigger uh, and put it here like this and then go and confirm it. Now just like last time, I'm gonna make a copy of it. So this time let's rename it. So I'm gonna go and do it model. And now we have to make a copy. So go and press Ctrl J. And this time I'm gonna name it background. Now activate your layer mask here, uh, then press Ctrl I. So you have the background. Now if I turn it on and off, the model is on different layer, the background is on different layer. Now hide both of this uh, with this I button and make sure that you have selected your layer mask here then go here and select your polygon lasso tool now let's make the selection so first a dot here a dot here a dot here a dot here and a dot here now let's zoom out and turn on this background layer then go and select your brush tool right click brush tool and first we have to fill up this area on so i'm gonna go and select my white color Pretty good, now let's go and zoom out. Now we have to remove the outside area. So for that, go to select and go to inverse. So outside area is selected. And since we wanna remove it, I'm gonna go and select my black color and remove it. Perfect, now go to your select and deselect. And now when you turn on the model layer, the illusion looks pretty good. Now let's zoom in and as you can see, there is this little corner you have to cover up. So right click on your background layer and select rasterize then make sure you have selected image uh, then go and select where is it the polygon lasso tool and make a selection then press shift backspace and here go and select content aware hit ok so it will fill up the area then press ctrl d to remove the selection also you can see the edges are really sharp which doesn't look good so i'm gonna activate my mask and double click on it then go and apply a little bit of feather so i think two pixel looks pretty good close it now let's zoom out and the effect looks much better so the basic effect is ready and now let's do some color correction so for that i'm gonna activate my background layer and just like last time i'm gonna go and create a new blank layer uh, get my paint bucket right click paint bucket tool and the color is black and fill it now i'm gonna go and change its blending mode to soft light so if i turn it on and off i have this really nice dark background 
but I don't want it here because it's way too dark. So select your eraser tool, right click and make sure hardness is 0% and remove it where you don't want. Uh, and if I turn it on and off, as you can see, it looks really nice. Now I'm gonna go and reduce its opacity to somewhere around like 60-70%. Then go and create another adjustment layer and select curves. The curve should be under your model and top of your background. Then go and just make it a bit darker, not too much. Uh, I think uh, that is enough. And this time keep it on entire image. So we have that really nice contrast. Looking pretty nice, then go and close it. Then go and create another adjustment layer and this time select Vibrance and add a little bit of Vibrance, not too much. Uh, so I think 30-40% uh, should be nice. Uh, reason why we did this so that we can have that uh, really nice color in the dress and also on that uh, yellow rim light that she has. All the color correction is done. Now let's go and create some lighting and shadows. So for that go and create new blank layer. Uh, right click select your paint bucket tool and fill in the black color then go to filter render you know the drill select lens flare in the lens flare I have selected 105 prime and the brightness is somewhere around like 109 percent uh, let's go and keep it a little bit down uh, so I think 99 is okay hit okay now let's go and change its blending mode to screen so we get rid of the black background then go and select your move tool and move it somewhere around here the reason I am putting light here so that we can match this shadow which we will create after this. So go and keep your light here. Now let's add the color. For that go to image adjustment and where is it? Select hue saturation and in the hue saturation go and select the colorize. Increase the saturation so you can see the color properly. The basic drill we do every time. Uh, and then this time don't make it orange but make it a bit yellowish. So it looks more like a studio light and not a sun. So I'm gonna go and make it a bit more yellow. Looking pretty good, now go and hit OK. After that, right click on your layer and select convert to smart object. Then go to filter, blur uh, and select Gaussian blur. In the Gaussian blur, uh, try to keep a little bit details. Since it's a studio light, uh, we can have those really nice details. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, then go and hit OK. So as you can see, without blur, with blur, hit OK. And because we converted into smart object, you can double click here and adjust the number anytime you want. So I'm gonna go and cancel it. Now let's do the final step and create the shadow. For that go and create a new blank layer from here and let's name it shadow. Now we have to make sure that you have this shadow layer active. Then hold your control key and click on this layer mask of model here exactly. So you will activate the selection. Now go and select your paint bucket tool and fill in the black color. Now go to select and deselect. Then let's flip it. So press Ctrl T, right click and select flip vertical uh, and match the legs. Uh, let's zoom in so you can see properly. Now we have to rotate it so we can match the angle of. This is really useful since we have shadow in original image so we can trace that. Uh, and let's go and put it a little bit here. So that match is really nice. Uh, then go and confirm it. Now I'm gonna go and change my opacity to somewhere around like 30-40% so I think 25% looks really nice after that go to filter, blur and apply a little bit of blur not too much so the shadows look really soft and nice uh, so I think 5 pixel should be enough then go and hit ok now I'm gonna go and remove it from her legs uh, the shadow so select your eraser tool uh, make it smaller then I'm gonna go and remove it from her legs so we can see them proper and it blends in better. Now zoom out and just like last time I'm gonna remove the shadow a little bit from here. So I'm gonna make my brush bigger. You can use layer mask for the backup so I'm gonna go and use the eraser. Uh, so as you can see now the shadows look much softer and blends in better. So I really hope that you guys found this follow up video useful. If you did, hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, ask me in comment section below. If you wanna check out more tutorials by me, you can click on any of these boxes and you can also subscribe to my channel. So every time I upload a new video, you will get the update. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.